I'm excited to give a talk about a frequently asked question when using NGRX, which is authentication. Authentication is a critical piece when managing access to your application, from handling initial login to checking each page during navigation. NGRX provides an architecture to handle this process with structure and predictability. So let's look at some of the goals we want to cover when building, using authentication with NGRX. Of course, we want to handle the authentication lifecycle from logging in, checking pages, and logging out. We want to manage the state for the authenticated user, which includes capturing any information about that user that's returned from the back end. And we also want to provide shared user information across components. Since store is a global state container, we can use this to share with components and services across our app. So let's take a look at some of the benefits of using NGRX for authentic with authentication. One of the questions we see most that also comes up is what goes in the store? And this authentication is a great example of shared state. Authentication is shared throughout the app. It can be changed from different areas of the app, like if you're logging out. And you can also hydrate this state if you're using it on mobile or server-side rendering. It's independent of authentication scheme. So whether you're using Firebase or Incognito or Auth0 or even a self-hosted authentication service, it works independent of that. We reduce API calls because you can't be certain that your authentication state is going to be valid for a certain amount of time. So instead of hitting your backend API when you're navigating between pages, you can check the store first, which makes that transition easier and faster. A big thing is when developing multiple apps, you're normally going to use a common login package. So Creating your authentication this way and using it, you can be used and shared across these multiple apps, depending on as you've already implemented your scheme. So Sherry asked me, how do I build this? And I was glad to answer that question. So the first thing we could talk about when building authentication with NGRX are actions. Actions are meant to be descriptive. Actions describe unique events in your app and provide context to where those actions came from. Actions are specific because we're capturing certain events, and we don't want them to be too generic. Actions also trigger state changes. These state changes are handled by reducers to transition from one state to the next. And they also trigger side effects. Side effects are where we connect with external resources and also provide actions back to the store. So it's good to break these actions into a few categories. The first being the auth category. And this is where we capture actions for handling the authenticated user, including logging in and logging out. We group also authentication API into a category, and these are re requests and responses that come back from the back end. We also capture actions about the specific UI events that happen on the login page when the user interacts with clicking buttons or other interactions that may occur. So actions determine flow for UI events. <laughs> Writing these actions up front allow you to map out entire user flows before even writing reducers or effects. So I can walk through this process before I've even done any of that. This also helps you to get a shared understanding of how these events are going to be handled. So now that we've covered actions, let's talk about states. Now the two states we're going to cover here are the login page and the authentication state. The login page here is described as an interface, and we have two main properties here. And these depend, differ depending on what you're, also what you're building. But here, we're capturing a pending property, which can be used to disable the form or display spinners while the request is being processed. 
we also capture an error, any error messages to display that relevant information back to the user in case of a failure. So next we talk about the authentication state. Here we have a user model that would contain what would be returned back from the API upon successful authentication. The auth state captured this, and we have our auth state. The auth state captured this user once the authentication is successful and would hold any additional information about the current user. You'll notice in the auth state that there isn't an explicit property about being logged in. And then we'll talk about that further. So now that we have models and authentication information into the store, how do we get that out of the store? We do that with selectors. And selectors fall into two categories, selectors that get and selectors that derive. Selectors are pure functions that are used to get simple and complex pieces of state. You use these selectors when you inject store to select to connect state to your components. In order to get the authenticated user with the store, we use a function that provides that state and we get the user property. We can also use selectors to derive state. So derive state is state that we can get insight from through existing information we already have. Whether the user is logged in or not can be derived from the user information that we already have using a selector. So this way you don't have to add extra information into your state because that information is already there. Here we are deriving the whether the user is logged in by converting the user property into a Boolean. So when the user logs out, the user information cleared, and that value becomes false. Next, let's talk about state changes. And we model state changes through pure reducer functions. And these reducer functions are easy to test because for a given input, you get a consistent output without, a consistent output without side effects. So here I'm visualizing the state transitions from going from an authenticated user to an authenticated state. We receive, upon successful login, we will receive a login success action that will hear our reducer, and then we will transition to an authenticated state. Also, with the login page, we would do the same state transitions. When the user clicks the login button, we go from a pending state, and in the case of a failure, we will return a login failure action, and we would capture that action with an error message to display to the user. So next, let's talk about side effects. Side effects are where you connect your actions to external requests. These also provide relevant data back to the store based on the result of those requests. So here, we're going to process the authentication from login and handle logging out. So if we look at this effect, you can see that I'm listening for a, a pay a action from the login page to log in. We take the user credentials and pass them to the authentication service. As I mentioned before, this is where you handle your, authentic, your custom authentication logic based on your scheme. As a result of this API request, we return a login success action with the user that we can populate the store, or we catch an error and we map it to a login failure action that is displayed to the user. Another question is how to handle dialogues. So when, the, when users click a logout button, you don't immediately log them out. You want to confirm their intent first. So here we are using an effect to prompt the user to confirm logging out using the Angular Material dialog service. Based on the user's feedback, if they confirm that action, we map it to a new action and start a new tra state transition to log out the user. If they cancel or dismiss the prompt, then we, we could just consider an empty side effect. Next, I'll talk about how the router integrates with the reactive store and authentication. And we use the router for side effects, including redirecting the user when logging in and logging out, and integration with route guards. So if we look at this login success action, we can see that 
Once that action comes in, we can use the router to perform a side effect and navigate the user to an, an intended destination. As you can see, I'm not I'm using a dispatch false here because we don't want this effect to produce any new actions and only perform that side effect. The same would go for a logout action. If the user logs out, we prompt them and they accept that prompt, then we can redirect the user back to the login page and their user session will be cleared. Router guards are a way that you can prevent navigation between pages, but we don't want to hit the actual API every time a user navigates between pages. And so we can integrate this with the store. So since we can verify that the authentication state will be valid for a certain amount of time, we can check the store first to see if the user is logged in. And this handles uh, when the, they navigate between pages and on like page reloads. So we check the store first, and then as a fallback, we hit the actual API before we redirect the user. So those are the steps that you would take to build authentication with NGRX. So let's see what that looks like. So here I have a login page, and I have the dev tools open so you can see the flow of events. So you can see I logged in, all using the reactive store. I dispatched actions to give a good bit of context to what happened during, these, during this process. I loaded books once the login page was complete. And if we walk through logging out, you can see the user's prompt. And I dismiss. And if I confirm, then it takes me back to the login page. So you can see how this integrates in with developer tools. So you can see how this entire transaction happens. So to recap, we covered actions, which are unique events that describe UI, unique events that describe interactions. State changes from transitioning from one state through another using reducers. Side effects for interacting with external resources or backend APIs. And using the router for navigation and additional side effects. You can find a full example of what I demoed here today at the repo below. And you can also look at the ConfSnap link to find other resources that will include other information about this talk and other talks. Thank you.